Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today we're going to build individual post pages in Django, and the pages are identified with slugs and named URLs. And I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I'll also provide a link for you to join my Discord server where you can discuss web development with other students, and you can ask questions that I can answer and receive help from other viewers too. I look forward to seeing you there. The source code for today's tutorial starts where the previous lesson ended, and there's a link in the description that provides the code for each lesson. I've got Visual Studio Code open. Let's open a terminal window by pressing Control and the back tick. From there, we want to start our virtual environment. So I'm going to type source, then .venv slash scripts. You would want to type bin, all lowercase, if you're on Mac or Linux. Then activate, press Enter. I can press Enter again, and we should see that .venv in parentheses. Now let's go ahead and CD into the My Project directory, and we're where we need to be. Now before we dive into today's lesson, we need to go ahead and add the rest of the data to the posts we created in the previous lesson. So let's do that by starting our server and going to the Django admin. So I'm going to type pi, then I want manage.py, and then run server. Press enter, it should start our server on port 8000 here on localhost. I'll press control and then click this address and then I'm going to open up Chrome so we can see our project. There it is. Let me go ahead and type slash admin here at the end and this should bring up the login screen. If you haven't saved your username and password into Chrome, you may need to enter that. If you remember, I typed Dave and then I think my password was Dave Test. But we can go ahead and log in now. Now that we're logged in here in the Django admin, let's go to posts and let's see what posts are still missing some data. We've got titles for all the posts, of course, but then here, if we look at the first post, you can see I've added this data. You may not have. I've got a body here that says I've added my first post and then we've got a first post slug. Let me change that to my dash first dash post. And this is what a slug is. We'll see this at the end of the URL when we go to this post page. And today we're creating these post pages. So let me save that. And now let me go to my second post. Here you can see it's missing a body and a slug. So I'll just type another post for the body. And then for the slug, I'll keep my same pattern. So I'll say my and then second dash post. Save that one. Now let's go to my elusive third post. And you can see it has everything here, but I'm going to edit this and put my at the beginning of the slug also. So it just matches the others. And now we've got that data. So you wanna make sure you have a body and a slug for each post that you have right now, because we're going to use that today as we create these pages. And we're back in VS Code. Now you can see here in the terminal window, it logged everything we did in the Django admin here as the requests came into the server. I'm going to go ahead and close the terminal, but leave the server running. Now let's open the My Project directory. From there, we wanna to go to the Posts app directory, and there we wanna to go to the urls.py file. Now, previously, we created this URL pattern here to view our post list, and it calls this post list function in the views, but we didn't add a name. So we can add this third param here to the path, and we wanna provide a name for this link. So I'm going to put a comma here, and then I'm going to have name equals, and I'm going to put posts. So now you might wonder, why do we add a name to this URL, and how do we use it? Well, let's go ahead and do that. We'll go to the top level templates directory here. So not in the post directory and we wanna come down to templates. Now inside of templates, we have a layout.html. So let's open that up. And inside of the layout, we're going to slash post. This is just a traditional HTML link. But instead of this, we can gain some uh, value by adding a named link here inside of Django. And this will allow us to pass params and things like that, which we'll learn about later. Let's go ahead and change this though. We're going to delete the slash posts here. And instead, we're going to use part of our template language. So we'll start with a curly brace. And of course we've got the ending curly brace. Then we put a parentheses sign and then, or not parentheses, what am I saying? A percentage sign and then another percentage sign. So that's what we wrap our value in. Now inside of this link to use the named URL, we'll say URL, and then inside of single quotes, because we have double quotes on the outside, we'll say posts. So now we're referring to that name we gave in the URLs file here where we have name equals posts. 
This is what we're referring to in our layout file inside of this template language. We're saying, hey, this is a URL and we want the URL that we named posts. So let's save these changes. And yes, we've saved the change in the urls.py as well. Now let's quickly go back to Chrome. And now we can click view site to get out of our Django admin screen. Now we're back on our site. Let's make sure this link is working. And if you remember this little newspaper emoji goes to our post list. And that's what we were changing inside of that layout.html was our navigation up here. So let's click this. And yes, it still works. So we're now using that named URL as we navigate to the post list. So now, as you may guess, we wanna create URLs for each of our posts so we can navigate to the individual post pages. But before we do that, let's go to the Django docs. And in the Django docs, here we go, I am on a page that shows path converters. And I'm going to use a path converter. I'll link to this in the video description. But what I wanna highlight here are just some of the path converters you can use, because I'm only going to use one today, but there's others you can read about here in the docs, like string and integer. But I'm going to use slug because we're working with our post slug and slug matches any slug string consisting of ASCII letters or numbers plus the hyphen, which I call a dash, and underscore characters. So for example, building dash your dash first dash Django dash site. So that's a longer slug, but that's, that's typical there. And the search engines can actually read that as well. So you wanna make something like that legible. It's often your post title, for example, and you're just putting hyphens in between, all lowercase as well. So now with that here in the docs, and remember I'll link to that in the description, let's go back and apply this to our application. Back in VS Code, I'm going to close this layout template for now that has our navigation menu. We wanna be back in the urls.py file. So I'm going to click here on line five and then use shift alt and the down arrow and just copy that line down. Now let's make some changes. So the path converter we just talked about, we use those inside of the less than greater than symbols and we're going to use the slug path converter. But then we're also going to receive a param and that's what we need to provide here. And that param is also going to be named slug in our case. So I'm also going to put slug right here and that will apply that path converter to the slug data we get. So the path converters here on the left represented by slug and the param we're receiving is here on the right, also represented by slug in this case. Now, after that, we have views and we have our post list function again. Now we haven't created the function to create the post page yet or route to it, but here we're going to go ahead and list it. So I'll just say posts underscore page. And as a matter of fact, we could switch that to post page because we're only going to be working with one post at that point. So we just need to remember to create that exact same name when we go to our views file. And then the name over here, let's go ahead and just name this page. So it's totally different than our other named URL. Now with those changes, we can go ahead and save. If you look at your app right now, I probably have an error because this doesn't exist. So now we need to go to the views and create the post underscore page function. Okay, let's click on the views.py file here just underneath our urls.py. And inside of this file, we need to create a new function for our post page. So we'll say def and we want post underscore page. This is also going to receive the request and it's going to receive that slug param that we talked about. Now inside of this function, for now, we're just going to echo what it receives, that slug. And to do that, we'll need to import something here at the top first. So I'm going to say from django.http and I want import HTTP response, and there it is in our list. So we're going to use that HTTP response, and we'll do that right here when we return our echoed slugs. We'll say return HTTP response, and let's just pass in the slug. So that will let us confirm that this is working before we add some more details and maybe a post page template to this function like we did up here with the post list. Now we really can't check if this is working yet because we haven't created those links in our post list to pass the slug param. So right now we can't check this until we do that. So let's go up inside of our posts app here to the templates directory in the posts app. And then let's go to the posts underscore list dot HTML where we can use that. And now inside of the template, I'm going to scroll down. What we wanna do is take our H2 where the post title is and put a link inside of there. So I'm going to put this on separate lines as it's going to extend a little further. 
So we'll have the H2 wrapped around everything. And then we're going to have our anchor with the href. So we'll say href. And for now, I'll just put empty quotes so I can close this out. And I want to have the closing anchor afterwards. So slash a there. I'll indent the post title as well. But now let's use our template language and our named URL once again inside of this href. So we'll have our curly brackets, our percentage signs, and then here we're going to say URL, and we're using the URL named page that we created, but we're still missing our slug. So how do we pass the slug along with this URL? Well, right here we can just put slug equals and then notice how we're getting the other information from our post, like post.date and post.body. But we have a slug for each post as well. So we'll say post.slug right here. And that will pass that slug value for the post to our function then in views. And it should receive that here. So now that this looks like we want it, let's go ahead and check it out in Chrome. And I'm back in Chrome. Let's go to our application. And if I haven't done anything wrong, this should work. Let's go ahead and refresh the post list. And now you can see they've changed colors because of the little bit of CSS I have here. So we have links for each post. Let's see if this works when I click on my first post. And yes, it's really small up here because I didn't apply a template or any CSS, but I'll go ahead and zoom in. You can see it says my first post. Now I'll zoom back out because we don't want a 500% there. But you can see that echo from the HTTP response is working. So if it will work for any of those pages and it's pulling the slug. So as I click on my second post, if you look at the URL here, which I can't really zoom for you, but it has at the end of the URL, we have posts slash my second post. And if we go to the first one, it's my first post and so on. So that should all match. Okay, we're back in VS Code. Now, something I want to point out is we've got a very generic name here for page. And right now we just have our posts app over here. And so we're using page there and we know it's inside of the posts app. But what if our application expanded or our, our whole Django project expanded and we had more apps, not just posts, we couldn't just overlap with that same name page. So we kind of need to designate that, hey, this page, this named URL we've created is inside of our posts application in the larger Django project. And that way we could name something else page, maybe inside of a user's app or something similar, and it would be designated inside of that app. So we need a way to do that. And we can, let's just go back to the urls.py here and above the URLs patterns, URL patterns, I should say, let's put app underscore name. And here I'm going to say equals and I'll put posts. So now we've designated that these URL patterns are inside of the posts app. But now when we link to those, instead of just using the name, we also wanna designate, hey, it's the posts page or the posts and in this order, I guess I should have named this one list. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's rename this one list, for example, so it makes more sense. Posts list, then we'd have a posts page. So let's go ahead now, save this, and let's change those links we've created. So if you remember, we created one inside of the layout and now I've changed the name. So this would be list, but to go ahead and use that namespace, we also wanna say posts colon list. And so now it's going to specifically refer to the named URL list that's inside of the posts app. And now I'll go ahead and close the layout after we save that. Let's go to the post list as well because we have this other named URL here. And here we want to say this is posts colon page. So now specifically the named URL page inside of the posts app and save that also. Now we should just verify this is working. So let's once again, go back to the application. Let's click on the home page. And now from here, we could go back to the post list and yes, it's still working as expected. And if we click on one of the posts, that's also still working as expected. Always good to check your links after you make changes like that. Back in VS Code, now let's go ahead and make a change here to our views because we're using this HTTP response, but we really want to use a page template and not just echo the slug. We actually want to present a post page. Okay, let's start by deleting our import of the HTTP response. We won't be using that anymore. And that, of course, will eliminate this line inside of our post page function as well. Instead, I'm going to copy what we have up here under post list on lines eight and nine with control C, come down to line 13 and control V to paste. 
Now I'm just going to change some of what I have here. Here we were getting all the posts and really we just want one post and we're still going to use post.objects but we're not going to use dot all. Now we're going to use dot git and then inside of the git we're going to pass slug equals slug and that will get the one post that we have that matches the slug that we are receiving here in the function. From here, it's a similar render where we pass in the request and we have posts, then we're going to have slash, and now we need to determine what we want to name our template. And I'm going to name that post underscore page. So get rid of the S, no more plural, so underscore page.html. And once again, instead of posts, I'm passing the post now. So we'll need to create this template. Right now this would be an error again if you looked at the application because our post underscore page.html template doesn't exist, but this did update the post page function like we need it. So now let's create that template. Okay, I'm going to click on the post underscore list inside of our posts app and inside of the templates directory and then the post directory and here is the post underscore list template. Now I just want to click new file. I'm going to create post underscore page.html, press enter, I've got a blank file, but I wanna go back to the post list. This is going to be very similar, so for me it's easier to just copy everything with control A, then control C, I actually select everything with control A, then control C to copy everything. Now back to the post page and control V to paste it all in. And now I'll decide what I want to be different. Well, one thing I know is this is a page dedicated to a specific post. So I want the post title to actually be the title of the page. So up here in our title block, I'm going to highlight posts on line four and paste in what I have for my template title here that we were also using below in the H2 on the post list. Now for this H1 here, this is also going to be the title of the page. So instead of post there, going to paste in the title here. Now we don't have posts to loop through anymore, so I'm going to get rid of the for loop. And after that, I can really get rid of the article that we have wrapped around everything because we have this parent section and I'm going to use this section. Now let me go ahead and indent the section tag here and then indent the H1, that looks better to me. Now we can get rid of this H2 altogether because we're using the H1 for the post title and we don't need to link to anything from here. Then we can just get rid of the extra lines and we're going to use the post date and post body. Now you could decide, do you want the date to show up before or after the post body, for example, on the page? But right now, let's just keep it really simple. So this is our post page where we're showing the title in an H1 and we've got a paragraph that shows the date, another paragraph that shows the body, and for the title of the page that shows up in the tab of the browser, this will also be the post title here. So let's go ahead and save. And notice we're still extending the layout. So we'll still have our navigation from that layout template at the top of each post page. And now we're back in Chrome. Let's check these links out and see if our post pages are working as expected. I'll click on my first post, and now, instead of getting that echo of just the slug on a blank page, we're actually getting a post page. Now, we don't have a whole lot of content, but we have my first post in the H1, then we have the date for the post, and then we have the body of the post. And if we go back to our list, we should see that for the second and third post as well. So I'll go back again, there's the third post. So this all works as we want it to, and the others are still linking. So we've used slugs today, we've used named URLs, and we created a template that we can use for each of our posts to have its own individual page as we navigate through our application. One final note today, guys, and this goes back into our layout template, and it's really nothing specific to Django, it's just something that's bothering me, so I wanna go ahead and add this, and that is we're using emojis here. Now, they're not, actual images where we would provide an image tag and an alt tag, but screen readers and accessibility sometimes struggle with emojis or what we mean by emojis. Now, home or house might be translated correctly by a screen reader. It's going to get Unicode characters. I just want to show how you can update this. So if you do use emojis in your page, like I am in this nav menu, it's actually accessible. So to do that, let's wrap this in a span element. And here after this, we'll say slash span. And now we want to add a role 
So let's say role equals. Now this is image because these emojis aren't really images, so we have to assign the role. But from there, we also need a label. So we can use aria-label, and here I can put home inside of that. So this will help with accessibility when you use emojis like we are in this example project. Now I'll allow you to go ahead and add the other two spans. I'll do that as well, so you'll see it in GitHub with my source code. But go ahead and add spans with the role image and the aria label that you think is appropriate for each emoji. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.